Okay, chapter 25.1, as I said on Friday, we are going today, tomorrow, and Thursday are going to be a lecture. Then Friday, you will have the study guide, um, and then you will test on whatever day your period tests. So this is first period, we test Monday. All right? So just be prepared for that. Um. Oh, I hadn't seen that actually animate. Sorry. By the time we get done, you should be able to describe historical views of the solar system, name the planets, and describe their motion around the sun, and explain how the solar system formed. So, here we go. Uh, ancient Greeks were the first to really put anything down about the solar system, like put it in writing. Um, they identified five planets and they didn't really any, even have any technology. Uh, these are just five planets that you could see. Uh, as technology improved, we know we found two other planets, not including us, by the way, that was five planets, not including earth. Cause we can't see earth cause we're on it. Um, and then we've also found some other stuff kind of out there. Um, we have also, because we now have tel telescopes that are powerful enough, we are also discovering planets that are actually outside our solar system. Okay. Are we good? Yeah. I, I'm trying not to give you a whole lot to actually have to type this time because we need to move quickly. Uh, ancient Greeks thought the earth was the center of the universe. Uh, and everything revolved around Earth. Even the sun revolved around Earth. It's, this is called a geocentric model. Geo means Earth. Centric means centered. So geocentric means Earth-centered. If you notice, we are right here in the middle. Here's Moon, uh, Mercury, Venus, then the sun is actually one of the ones that orbits us. We all look at that now and go, what? That's just silly. Are we good? Okay. In the geocentric model, what happens, what they said is that the, the sky, um, it's a set of spheres and all those spheres are located on top of one another. Um, oh, what are those jawbreakers? Man, I hate it when words go out of my head. You know the jawbreakers that have the different flavors on them? Okay, that's kind of what they said our, our world was. We were a sphere and each, each layer had a different planet on it. And every object in the sky rotated on one of those spheres. And they moved around the earth as the sphere rotated. I know, kind of weird, right? So that explains why it explained why the planets and the stars moved but it didn't explain things like sometimes it looks like some of the planets move backwards. So it was kind of, you know, like, eh, no, I don't think that's really it. Then, um, a little bit later, Ptolemy kind of came up with this really very mathematical, because he was kind of a mathematician back in ancient Greece, um, system that had a whole bunch of circles. And basically what he said is that the small planets moved in little tiny circles called epicycles. And those epicycles moved in bigger circles called difference. All right. Still Earth-centered. 
But the planets, this kind of is explaining the retrograde motion of some of the planets. So they just do this loopy, loopy loop on another circle. It was very, very mathematical. And there was a great explanation. Still wasn't quite right. But he was getting there. Um... He said that while Earth was in the center circle, Earth wasn't really the center. There was another spot just beyond Earth that was really the center. But since Earth was still in that inner circle, they still considered it to be geocentric. Um, this explanation really actually answered all the questions. It kind of ticked off all the boxes. It still wasn't perfect though. Um, this was accepted from 105 um, CE, CE stands for Christian era, um, to the early 1500s. So this was accepted for a really long time until um, the telescope came to be used. In the early 1500s, Nicholas Copernicus developed a totally different system. Uh, and it was centered around the sun. Everything moved around the sun. We call that heliocentric. Helio means sun. Centric means centered. Heliocentric is sun-centered. Now, the problem was he still said that the planets moved in circles. But instead of moving around the earth, they all moved around the sun. So this whole circle thing didn't quite have planets in the places that they should have been. When you were go to look for a planet, it wasn't quite there. Instead of it being here, it would be like over here. And it was like, ah, oh, something's going on there. It's just not quite right. Where'd my mouse go? There it is. So it did fix some of the problems of Ptolemy's, but it still wasn't a perfect fit. So in the early 1600s, it only lasted about 100 years, uh, Johannes Kepler came along. And he changed Copernicus's model. Instead of every being in a circle, he put everything moving in an ellipse. Now, I don't know about you, but I look at this and I find it very interesting that um, even though, why is my mouse being weird? Why do you hate me, Mouse? There we go. Um, that even though we know that there are other planets that have moons on them, I always find it interesting that they usually only put our moon in diagrams. Um, did I move through, like, too many of them? Hang on. Gerarg. Stop! You're going the wrong way. Seriously. It's going to be one of those days, you guys. I'm sorry. Hang on. I don't know what happened. There's Ptolemy. Okay, we're on this one. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Really? Okay, I guess we're just going to go with it. I don't know. Um, Ptolemy's model actually fit everything. It checked off all the boxes. It allowed you to find the planets where they were supposed to be. Even with that being the case, people did not believe the heliocentric model. Because 
everything was, at that time, everything was very religious based, um, very church based. And so when people said, you know, earth was the center of the universe, well, of course we were because God made us. And so he would have, of course, put earth as the center of the universe or the center of our solar system. And when these people came out saying, uh, no, uh, the sun is the center of the universe and we rotate around that, that was a big deal. And the church did not like that. And remember, the church was kind of government. We're very lucky that the church is not the center of our government, but it was back then. So when Galileo discovered a couple of things that proved this correct, that did not make the church very happy. A couple of things that he discovered. Jupiter had moons. Nobody knew that Jupiter had moons before. You couldn't see him with the naked eye. Galileo starts using a telescope and he, he can see four of Jupiter's moons. Um, so that meant that things could actually orbit around something other than Earth. So, huh. And then they noticed, he noticed that Venus actually has phases. Just like our moon does. And the only way that Venus would have phases is if Venus was orbiting the sun. Because it doesn't orbit us. Uh, it, it wouldn't have phases if it orbited us. Venus would not because. So then a lot more people began to believe the heliocentric model. It was called the Copernican Revolution, and it made the church really, really, really mad. And basically, they took Galileo to court, um, and in, in that time, um, they convicted him of heresy. They said that this was against God. It was against the Bible. It was against, you know, everything that we knew, um, against, it was against the church and he got in like seriously big trouble about that. Are we good? So now we kind of move to where we are. We know that our solar system is just a teeny tiny part of our universe. And it's not even at the center of our universe. Our solar system is at the very, very edge of, of what we know as our universe. Hopefully by now, um, you, you know and remember that each planet does not emit its own light, it reflects sunlight, right? We all know that. Please tell me we all know that. Yeah. So beginning in the 1990s, scientists discovered new, new solar systems. We're not the only one out there. We call these planets that are in other solar systems, we call them extrasolar planets or exoplanets because exosolar is kind of hard to say. So they just call them exoplanets. Some of these planets we have, people have actually seen um, with a telescope but most of them are found using other methods. This, by the way, is another solar system that's somewhere out there. Somewhere out there. Sorry. We have discovered more than 3,600 exoplanets 
and actually identified them using some of the techniques that we're going to talk about. One of them, one of the techniques they use is they watch for really slight motion changes in a star as it moves toward or away from us. If it changes in just the right way, it can indicate, it can show that there's another gravity force working on it. And if there's another gravity force working on it, then there could be another planet or another star close to it. That's actually how we've just, we discovered Neptune. We're going to get to that when we get to ne Neptune, but that's how Neptune was discovered. Because Jupiter wasn't, or not Jupiter, Uranus was not in quite the right place. And so it was like, there's something going on there. And then they discovered Neptune. We also watch the brightness of stars, other stars than our sun. Because there are other stars than our sun. If the brightness of a star changes, that probably means that a planet or something has crossed in front of it. And so we go, oh, that means there's something else out there. We need to watch for that. I had a student teacher who uh, was actually going to school to get her doctorate in astrophysics. Are we good? Okay. Oh. Nope, back. Oh, dang it, I can't go backwards. There it is. Ha. Ah. What is... Mm, okay. I'm going to start it again. Ha. Huh. So, things we already know. We know that there are eight planets. Yes, there used to be nine. Now there are eight. We also have five dwarf planets and more than 150 moons, lots of asteroids and lots of other objects that are all part of our solar system. That's without even going outside our solar system. Hopefully now you know that the sun is the biggest object in our solar system. But did you know that the sun is not really a big star? It's kind of an average sized star. It's not big, it's not little, it's just kind of a nice medium sized star. The farther the planets are away from the sun, the more distance there are between those planets. And hopefully by now, you remember that the orbits of the planets are not circular. They are elliptical, which is, means it's kind of an oval shaped. And if you know a planet's orbital period, how long it takes to go around the sun one time, then you can figure out its distance from the sun if you know the mathematical equation and if you're good at math, which I'm not, so I'm not going to go into that. Are we good? Space distances are really, really far apart. We measure them in astronomical units or AU. One astronomical unit is about 93 million miles or 150 million kilometers, which is the distance from Earth to the sun. So one astronomical unit is the distance from Earth to the sun. So when we start talking about how far planets are apart, You'll know. Are we good? Okay. So here's the order of our planets and the way that, okay, this isn't the way I was taught because we had nine planets, 
but um, it's close enough. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. And the way that we were taught to remember it is my very exhausted mother just served us nachos. Because the first letter in each one is the first letter in each planet. All right. When we had Pluto, it was my very exhausted mother just served us nine pickles. I know, right? But now we don't have now we don't have Pluto as a planet anymore, so we had to come at you couldn't just say served us nine, so you had to come up with a food that started with N, right? So my Mercury, very Venus, exhausted Earth, Mother Mars, just Jupiter, served Saturn, us Uranus, Nachos Neptune. Okay, if you can remember the first letter of that sentence, of each word of that sentence is a planet, it will help you learn the planets in order. The only two you'll struggle with, and I'm just going to tell you, are Mars and Mercury. And I always remembered Mercury because Mercury just sounds hot to me. I don't, that word has always sounded hot. I don't know why. So Mercury is closest to the sun. Okay. So how did our solar system form? I know this is huge. It's controversial. Everybody goes, oh no, this is not the way. Um, we have to teach what science shows us. All right. So we go with the nebular theory. Nebular theory sa says that about 4.6 billion years ago, there was this giant cloud of gas and dust, which is called a nebula. And that giant cloud of gas and dust started to collapse. Gravity did what gravity does. It starts pulling things together, which is why, the, why it eventually collapsed. That pulling together gave off gravitational potential energy. As it started to collapse, small particles of gas and dust started banging into each other. They ran into each other, and as they ran into each other, they combined to make bigger particles, and that combination releases kinetic energy. We already know that that happens. When the nebula finally collapsed, the gravity at the center increased and it started to cause that cloud to spin. Are you good? The more it collapsed, the more gravity pulled everything in, the faster it spun, which makes sense. If you have ever watched, um, if you ever watched ice skaters or ballerinas, when they start to spin, as they, they can start with their arms out like this, but as they pull their arms in, what happens? They spin faster. Okay, it's exactly what happened with our nebula. It was all spread out and it started to spin. And then as it started to spin, everything collapsed in. So it spun faster and faster and faster. Most of the mass in this nebula all started to come together to the center of the nebula. It got pulled in. But the rest of it kind of started to flatten out into a disk. The disk, the whole nebula is actually mostly made of hydrogen and helium. But that's also what went out into the disk. So the density and the pressure at the very center is just like anything else. The very center of anything got greater and greater and greater until it became so intense 
that nuclear fusion started. Basically, our sun lit up for the first time because the pressure was so great that hydrogen started combining. And as soon as that hydrogen combined to make helium, that released light. And our sun was born. When that happened, it stopped the disk from continuing to collapse because it was creating energy that pushed back out. The outer part of the disks, things started to cool down now. Things started to kind of calm down and cool down. And as they did, matter started colliding and condensing to make bigger and bigger clumps of matter. The larger clumps of matter were called planetesimals. And they actually, because they were big enough, they actually had gravity. And so they started pulling smaller clumps into them. And those, those planetesimals got bigger and bigger. Excuse me. Are we good? Okay. So everything is still colliding with each other. Those planetesimals keep getting bigger. Um, did I skip a slide? Not yet? Okay. Um, gravity closest to the center of the disk was greater. So this is where all the heavier materials like rocks and metals, which is why our inner planets are all rock and metal and things like that. The gases stayed farther out, which is why all the gas planets are out there farther in the, in the system. Planetesimals just kept getting bigger and bigger and they grew to be protoplanets. Protoplanets continued to grow until they finally became either planets or moons. As we said, the inner, because of gravity, these inner planets were made of rock and metal. So Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars actually have all rock and metal. They're not a lot. They do have some gases, but they are not gas giants and gas planets. They have a nice rocky center. We might actually finish these today. So excited. Outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. These form from the lighter materials, the gases, hydrogen, helium, methane, ammonia, and water. But the weird part about it is because it's so cold, what we consider to be gases um, can actually be solids or liquids on these planets. Are you good? Is that the last one or is there one more? Is that the last one? I will just hold on just a second. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, I'm not, not those questions, but yes, I will in just a minute. Okay. I'm 